Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Seth and welcome back to a, another video guide for Ark Survival Evolved. Today in this video, folks, I'm going to show you how to tame one of the more annoying creatures in Ark. It is annoying, but also useful, and that is, of course, the Electroporus, or Forest, actually, the Electroporus, which is basically the eel. For this, you will need Biotoxin. It is a passive tame, but it is also an aggressive creature that will knock you out, stun you, and dismount you, so it is quite tricky to tame. For this, we're going to need a trap, and I'm going to show you my sort of trap and how it works. It's going to be a fairly large trap, and uh, there is a bit of a reason for it, but you can also use this trap for the purposes of taming creatures such as the anglerfish. It can have multiple purposes should you use to choose it for that. Now, we're going to start with one foundation. We're going to go then two foundations to the side, so a total of three foundations, as you can see right there. And then we're going to go two foundations this way once that creature decides to get out the way. Same on the other side as well. So the idea is you want a foundation in the center and then a square of five by five foundations all around it. That foundation in the center will serve as a marker. That is where you want to be once you have uh, uh, guided and or pulled the eels to your trap. The way this works is you will be inside the trap and the eels on the outside of the trap. It is a very close call and it is quite tricky to do so. It's quite important that you are in the center of the trap to avoid the incoming damage and there will be plenty of damage incoming. On the outside, we're going to start going with the window frames. Now this allows the electrophorus or the eel to kind of poke through the trap. If you try and use door frames, they can actually swim through the door frames, so that is pretty useless. I suggest and recommend that you go four tall. It's worth going three tall if you want to save up on resources, but four tall is the most efficient way of doing it. As you'll see later in the video, they do tend to be able to stick in the trap or come within the trap quite a fair distance and they can actually hurt you whilst you are inside the trap. So this isn't so much a trap, it's more of a cage for you, the player, to allow you to get close enough to the electrophorus so that you can feed it the biotoxin. I do realize that this does require quite a few resources and you can of course build it out of stone. You don't necessarily need to build it out of metal. I'm just going with metal because I have metal parts to build this particular cage. As I've said, if you've watched my uh, How to Tame an Angler Fish video, you can use this exact same trap for the purposes of taming an angler fish should you use this, so it can be a multi-purpose trap. So I'm just going to finish off this last row of window frames right here. And then we're going to close it off. You don't really want gaps in this because the electrophorus can actually get through fairly, fairly narrow gaps. So very important there is to do with the electrophorus's uh, hitbox and it can actually squeeze through gaps that will amaze you for how big it is. So we're going to close off the ceiling, we're going to cover it all up, right there. So I'll go all the way around and close this. Now for this I will also need a creature to kite it with, we do want to swim faster than the electrophorus. And I do recommend having a cryopod as well. The creature that I'm going to use to kite it is that one next to me, so it is the anglerfish. It does have uh, its speed pumped up to 120. That means I can outswim pretty much anything that is potentially dangerous in the seas, and that's probably the best way of doing it. And then I put the rest of the points that I got from leveling up into health. I do want to make it tanky so it can take a bit of damage. Don't forget the anglerfish does not have a saddle, so that means it will not take reduced damage from other creatures. With the gate up, or sorry, with the gateway up, just place the gate and that is pretty much it. The idea is you want to kite the anglerfish to the cage, you want to get in it, shut the gate 
and kind of place yourself there. As you can see, you cannot place a bed of any form there, which kind of sucks, but it makes plenty of sense. So this is right there, speed for it, and as you can see, I've put a lot of uh, HP in the anglerfish. It may take damage from multiple creatures whilst I'm attempting to do this. Biotoxin always is in the zero slot or the last action bar slot because it is a passive tame. Okay, there's one right there. So I'll try and kite that one. I'll get my cryopod at the ready. Now, you can try and park your anglerfish so that they can't get to it but do bear in mind the anglerfish does have a bit of a large turning radius so if you miss the marker you will have to cryopod it to prevent it from being killed okay we've got the attention of that particular electrophorus so it's time to swim towards the trap i'm going to try and close the trap behind me off of the anglerfish that worked quite well and i missed the mark as you can see i'm just spinning around in circles i can't really actually get into position so that does kind of suck a bit meaning that i will have to cryopod the anglerfish which is why you want to have a cryopod with you now this time around i was lucky enough only to have a single eel normally eels tend to travel in groups of three four possibly even five and if you see it doing this do not be fooled do not exit the cage it's basically reposition itself for another attack it's not running away because it can't get to you that is going to be a costly mistake so just swim up to it give it the biotoxin and wait for its second feed as with all passive tames in arc the time between the first and the second feed does take significantly longer than the times between the other feeds following the second feed and there we go we have an anglerfish notice that i do take damage sometimes from it it can bite me it can shock me this was just one single eel I'll show you what happens when you find and kite an entire group of eels. For that, you will need something to take care of the ones that you don't want. And it's highly recommended that you do so. And you will see why. They do tend to create an arc between them when they do that electrical thing. And they can get you in the trap. So you don't want them to do that. Meaning you'll have to either kill them or hurt them to such a level that they will want to swim away they will swim away and come back so you'll have to be careful uh preferably you will want to kill them now i'm gonna go looking for some eels um there should be groups of them around here they are fairly common in the seas i just have to find one and be careful not to get too close to them uh if you get too close to them you will get dismounted and that is going to suck so don't uh, don't be foolish. Don't make that mistake. They will stun your tame to the point where it cannot do anything, which predominantly will result in your tame being killed. Also, be careful for the jellyfish. They are no joke as well. They don't have a lot of HP, but they are annoying. Okay, we've got some Moses coming for me. Uh, Moses, I mean, uh, blessies. So I need to get out of there. Hopefully I can outswim them fast enough to the point where they stop chasing me uh, before I actually bump into some meals. I know they'll be around here, it's just a matter of finding them. Now, I could cut the section out, but I kind of want to show you what you will be up against and why that 120 speed is actually useful. Also, once I found my eels, I will not make any cuts to the video to kind of show you exactly what you need to do. So there's five of them there. I'm going to swim slowly towards them to the point where they stop spinning in circles and just look at me. So they've done that. I'm now going to go towards the trap. I'm going to try and sprint from time to time. They can be quite quick, so you don't want to be doing this on foot if you are far from the trap because they will catch up with you. Okay, so I've got a fair distance. I'll let them sort of catch up with me i'm just gonna go into the trap try and shut the gates i missed that one so i'm gonna have to dismount and shut the gates manually it's good if you can do that off of your anglerfish if you can't just 
park it and dismount quickly and shut the gate. Now it's a thing of waiting for them to come to me. With regards to killing the ones that you don't want, it's really up to you what you choose to use. You can use whatever weapon that works in the water for the purposes of this video and to keep things quick. I will, of course, use a tech rifle. You can use a crossbow, you can use a bow, you can use whatever you want. Obviously, I recommend using a crossbow and if you have a higher quality crossbow, then that is even better. Right, so as far as I can tell, they're close to the trap, so I'm going to go out without the mount. Oh, there we go. Never mind. That was good enough to get that guy's attention. So I'm going to position myself in the center. You may have to occasionally reposition, but now it's just a thing of waiting. So as you can see, they can stick through the cage quite a bit. So from this point forth, I am going to have to try and figure out which one is of the highest level because... I always want the higher level. So as you can see right there, there's like a little electrical arc between them. And if they split up on either side of the cage, that arc will get you. Now, my anglerfish is taking damage. So what I'm going to do is I am going to cryopod it. I do recommend having a cryopod. Now, whilst they cannot physically bite me, they can electrocute me with that little arc that you see between them. So for that reason, I'm going to have to try and clear out some of the anglerfish. Notice that if I damage them sufficiently but don't kill them, they will swim off. But they don't swim off permanently. They will continuously come back. And uh, if the one that you're trying to tame does that shock, the other ones will do the shock and cause an arc. So therefore you'll take damage. Do keep that in mind. You'll see throughout the video that they keep coming back. And what I find really interesting about the eels is they'll come back towards the cage if you're not looking at them if you have your back stuck at them uh or yeah if your back is at them they will try and get you from the back which is quite an interesting mechanic for the eels there we go just as i said you saw that arc so i look at it it goes away i wasn't able to kill that one quick enough so that is going to be a bit of a hindrance now i could try and get close to the window and shoot it but i can deal with it being out there it does do damage, but not enough necessarily to kill me. However, do bear in mind that your scuba set will take damage. Now, of course, you can do this with a scuba set. I'm doing it with a full set of tech armor, so that that increases the visibility underwater so that you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to try and kind of gauge which one is of higher level and try and go for that one. There we go. Just as I said before, if you turn your back on it, it will try and get back to you. So it kind of starts behaving like the booze in Mario. So just keep that in mind. So at the moment, I've got two eels that are trying to nip at my back and one that is at full health trying to kill me. That's the one I'm going to try and get. I don't know what level it is. But you can see the arc between it and the other eel that is somewhere around here. Alright, let's go for it. That's that. So just swim up to it. Press E when prompted. Swim away. And wait for the second feed. As I've said... The second feed will be a bit longer from the first feed, but then after the second feed, it will want its biotoxin a lot more regular. Okay, so that guy got me. That's fine. I've seen the other eel right out there somewhere. So I need to keep an eye on that guy. Now, of course, I could have just cut to the segment, but as you can see, there is a bit of tension right here with regards to taming these things. And they are quite useful, and I'll show you why I think they're useful. Okay, so that was the level 95. That was actually the highest level. That kind of sucks. That's the one I wanted, but I think the other one is level 85. But I'll have to work with that. All right, does it want its second feed right now? It does, I think. Just trying to keep an eye on that other eel. Now, if it gets close enough within range for me to shoot it, I will do so. Other than that, there's no point in actually wasting ammo. And uh, obviously, with a tech rifle, I will damage my own structure. So I don't really want to do that. So 
So as you can see, they do stick in the cage quite a fair distance. Now I'm stuck in between the eel and the carcass of the eel that I killed earlier. So I just kind of punched my way out of that one. It doesn't really matter if you do damage to the electrophorus. It will still be tameable, but I'd rather not damage it because I might need it to protect me from other things after I tame it. I will be fairly weak, and as I've said, as you've seen just now, whilst I'm not taking a lot of damage, my armor has taken a bit of a toll. So I double pressed E in my desperate act to try and feed it before it actually shocks me. That kind of didn't work to my advantage, but it is what it is. There we go. Where is it? It sounded like the other eel returned. Whoop. Careful not to get stuck. Wait until it's hungry again. Okay, that's fine. I can wait. Also, you want to stay fairly still so that you preserve your stamina. Normally, you regenerate stamina when you are mounted, but I've got nothing to mount with. There's a second eel right there. Tried to catch me off guard. Where'd it go? Where'd you go? Whoop. Okay, so I have to wait for it to, to be hungry again. I thought it'd be hungry by now, but... Nope. So, notice that I'm always looking back over my shoulder to see where that other eel is. If I spot it, I don't want to get nipped by it. I should want it to feed now. There we go. Quickly get out. Now, the advantage of having a scuba set is you do swim faster than with the tech armor. But as you've seen from the damage numbers, the tech armor does offer more armor, so to speak. What's very nice about these guys is that whilst you cannot mount them, when together in a group, they do get a pack bonus that does increase their stats. And so it makes them a bit more dangerous and harder to kill. So you do want these guys to have uh, your base protected. They are quite efficient at killing things in a pack. Now, I need to figure out where that other eel is. I'm going to bring out my anglerfish. And I'll take this eel to safety. And so basically, they are really good guard dogs for your water base. Okay, I'm kind of stuck on that guy, so let's try this again. There we go. There's one coming. Okay, that's an anglerfish. That's fine. So I'm going to make my way towards my base. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by that pack bonus. So here we are, back at base. I've got two eels next to each other they've got a little plus two symbol third one joined they got a plus three symbol uh so as you can see the more you have the higher that little number will get the more their stats will be increased making them more dangerous and more efficient do bear in mind as you can see right here they have to be fairly close to each other but they are pretty good at defending your water base they are annoying, they will dismount players, so you definitely want something like this on a PvP server protecting your water pen. That is pretty much it for this video, folks. I do hope that you have enjoyed it and found it useful and informative. If you have, please don't forget to support me and the channel by hitting that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't already for more similar content from myself. And if you have just subscribed, why not check out some of my other videos and guides here on this channel. Who knows, you might just enjoy them. Also, for those interested, you can always find me on the Sethtopia Discord. Links to this, of course, you can find down below in the video's description as well as in a pinned comment from myself. Until next time, stay safe, folks.